Okay, so this video will be about if then else statement in JavaScript. And we'll see how we can apply it in Google Sheets. And again, there's going to be millions of ways you can apply this, but we'll look at a single example of how we can apply it in Google Sheets. We have some numbers here from one to, I don't know, 99, I guess. And what we'll do, we'll apply some if statements. So if you're familiar with regular if statements uh, in uh, Google Sheets, which is your if function, uh, if I go like equals if, and then I'll do my logical test, I say if this is greater than, uh, let's say 50, comma, then we can do some text. So we can say, uh, hi, right? And otherwise we're gonna do not hi. So this is our regular if function in Google Sheets, it has nothing to do with app scripts. And if we copy it down, we're gonna get this. So what we will do, for a start, we'll accomplish just this using app scripts. So I'm going to clear this out and let's go to our app script editor and start working on it. So what we will have to do, we'll have to check this cell and see if the number is greater than 50. Then in this cell to the right, we're going to have to place that high or whatever, some text based on that, right? So uh, this one is uh, a seven cell. So let's keep that in mind. I'm gonna go to my app scripts. So I don't need all this stuff here. I'm gonna start from uh, my variable application. So spread sheet app. Perfect, and then we'll access that variable and we'll get our current active spreadsheet. We will also get our current active sheet and we'll assign this to a variable active sheet equals this. And then within that active sheet, we'll access that cell that we had so that cell was get range so i said a7 that will be the seventh row the first column if you're not sure about what i'm doing here go back and watch the first video about app scripts so there it is uh that's gonna get that uh particular cell which is a7 and we'll go ahead and get the value from that cell so uh, we'll go ahead and for right now, let's store it in a variable. We'll say variable, uh, I guess we'll call it uh, current cell, uh, although that might not be the best name for this variable. Maybe we should rename it and put something else. So um, I'm gonna call it working cell. So that's working cell variable. We're gonna basically grab the value, which is one, and place it in this variable. So what we'll have to do then, we're gonna have to check whether that value, which is currently one, is greater than 50. And we'll do it using our if statement. So if statements in JavaScript have this uh, particular syntax. So we'll have our if, statement we start here and then inside of parentheses we do our logical test uh, which should output true or false as a result so what we want to check whether this working cell that we have is greater than 50 right if that's greater than 50 if that condition is true right here in this parentheses we're gonna do what's between this square brackets right here so what we want to do we want to go to this cell which is our b7 cell which will be pretty much i'm gonna copy this put it over here so then i'm gonna get the active sheet 
and get range and instead of getting the value we're gonna set the value and we want to say hi if that's that and we want to place this in the second column so we're saying let's go grab the very the this this number which is the seventh row first column right here get the value place it in a variable called working cell and then let's check if that particular number is greater than 50 we will go to this second column of the same row and set the value to high that's pretty much all we're saying here and I'm gonna move this to a new line here so that's that so that's our regular if statement so currently if I just go ahead and run this particular function we shouldn't really see anything happening because it's gonna check whether this greater than 15 it's not greater than 15 it's not gonna do anything here which is exactly what I got so let's put a number in that cell that's higher than 50 I'm gonna go like 67 right so let's go ahead and run the same script again and we can see that this time because that was a match it's gonna place high in that particular cell right here if I change it to something smaller than 50 or even equal 50 it shouldn't really do anything so right now it's really not gonna do anything because there's already a high in that cell it's gonna stay high in that cell so if I remove this and then I rerun it again we'll see there is nothing really happening as a result of that right so that's that what we're going to do now is do our else statement so uh, if it's greater than 50 we're gonna put high and otherwise we're gonna do low right so that's our else statement so there it is so we're gonna check for this condition and if the you know that's true we're gonna do this and if it's false we will just say go to that cell and put something different so low so this point uh, we're gonna run this so we should see that it still says it says low because it's 50 so we put 67 or something like that we'll rerun the script should be able to go back and see that now it's high because we're checking that and it says that's the number so far we're just checking that single cell over here and we're placing something to the right so what we want to do we want to just go through all of these different options from here all the way through here and basically just go all the way down and put highs or lows and on the right so what we'll have to do we'll have to create a for loop and we'll do our conditioning instead of the loop so i'm going to go on top here before any of this uh, and start my for loop so I'm gonna say for variable I equals zero and I smaller than I'm gonna just put some numbers here because we're gonna have to change this anyways I plus plus and whatever happens it's gonna be within this curly brackets so I'm gonna start that curly bracket here and I want to end it after this whole thing happens over here so I'm gonna go here put my curly bracket now when you have situations like this it's a very good idea to use tabbing to make sure that you understand which piece of code appears within which piece of code now what happens is this entire thing happens within that for loop so to make that clear i'm going to highlight that piece of the code and hit tab and indent that code so we can see that this belongs inside of this for loop great so that's our i variable and i don't really need spaces here let's remove those so that's our i that's for for loop with our i variable first of all we have to figure out where that loop starts so that loop is going to start from the seventh row so therefore instead of starting from zero I'm gonna start from seven and I have to finish at row 13 
So I'm going to say if it's smaller than 14, or we could say, or if it's uh, smaller or equal to 13, if we don't want to use 14. So we'll say, let's start from seven and end at 13. So that's what we're going to do. So uh, that's gonna loop through this and make it turn around this thing that many times. So it's gonna one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven times it's gonna turn, but it's still going to be doing that uh, operation on the same row over and over. So what we'll have to do, we'll have to replace this row seven with a variable i to make it more dynamic. So all these occurrences of row seven, I'm going to replace with variable i, which we can think about as current row. Uh, so let's make a is our current row index. A little comment there. So we know, as we look at this code, what that means. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and save this. And at this point, if I rerun the script, go back, you should see that we were able to go through this and whichever number is greater than 50, we're assigning high. Otherwise, we're assigning low. So that's our regular if then else statement that we have. So uh, now what if we had like a mid range, right? So let's say we want uh, values that are above uh, 75 to be in a high range, values that are lower than 35 to be in our low range, and everything in the middle, it's going to be something else or whatever, maybe 25. I don't know. We'll, we'll just figure out. It doesn't matter. So what I'm going to say that if it's above 75, and if I want to include 75 in this high range, then I'm going to do greater or equal to instead of just greater, right? But right now I'm going to say greater than 75, which means in a high bracket, I will uh, include 76, 77, 78. Well, it's 75.01, it's going to be included in there. Basically, that's what we're going to do. But 75 is still going to be in the bracket below. So maybe that's the right way to do it. Maybe that's the wrong way to do it. I don't know. So uh, actually, to make some difference in our code, let's just do greater or equal to. So we have an example of that as well. So if it's greater or equal to 75, which means we're 75, we're including in our high bracket, we're going to put high. Now, what I want to do, I want to add some sort of mid range in here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to close this one. And then I'm going to include else if statement here. And with else if statement, you can do another condition here. So, and I'm going to do the same working cell. So I'm going to say if uh, that working cell is greater than 75, we're going to do this. Then if that is greater than uh, 25, so let's not include 25 in this case. So it's above 25, we're going to include in our mid bracket. So mid. And finally, we can do if it doesn't match this as well, then let's just for everybody else assign low. So if I save this, I run this. I have to run it from here. So you should be able to see 67 is mid, 7 and 2 are low, 99 is high, mid, and so we're able to assign all of them into their respective brackets. But there is some uh, misunderstanding with our if function is that uh, some people think that if you're doing this uh, bracket that's greater than 75, and then you have a second bracket that's going to be like the mid range. You have to do double condition and you have to check whether this is greater than 75. And it's the same thing is smaller 
then this one on top, right? This. So if we do this, this should still work. So instead of just saying in this else if statement, we're checking whether it's greater than 25, we'll also check that it has to be less than 75 to assign it to our mid, mid range, right? So if I run this, it should still work exactly the same way. So no problem there. And it works the same way, but this is really unnecessary statement to do in this particular case because uh, it works from top down. So it's going to check the first one. So if the first one occurs, it's not really going into the second or the third or any other condition that we have. So if this condition is true on top one, it's going to do this one. And then it's not going to do any others below. The same way, if this condition is true, it's going to do this one. And then it's not going to do any others. So basically, on top, we're checking if it's greater or equal to 75. If that condition didn't meet, then we can simply just say if it's greater than 25, because we already know it's not greater or equal to than 75, because we didn't pass it here. So it's unnecessary, but if you do it, it's not a problem. Don't worry about it. Now, finally, the last thing I want to mention, you can actually uh, do multiple else if statements instead of just doing one. And to give you an example of that, let's just create another else if. I'm going to copy this whole thing right here. And I'm going to paste it over here. I'm repeating the same thing. And I'm going to do another range. So I'm going to say if it's greater than equal 75, then it's high. If it's greater or equal to maybe 50, We'll say high mid if it's greater or equal to 25 or maybe greater to 25. We'll say low mid, doesn't matter. And finally, anything else is low. So the point of here is that you can chain as many else if conditions as you want and it will work just fine, no problem. So if I run this, Go back, now you can see high mid, low mid, low, high. We can assign to different brackets. And that's our if then else, else if statement in JavaScript. Thanks for watching and subscribe for new AppScript videos.